My name is Troy Johnson. I've been snowmobiling for 35 years. I've own uh, right now. I'm the owner of Lincoln County Customs, uh, which we've been open since 2008. Uh, before that, I was a Yamaha dealer for 17 years, snowmobile dealer. Basically, I'm the owner operator of Lincoln County Customs. We have a few employees in the winter time that help out. The last year, we actually ran the Rimshaw, the Rocky Mountain Hill Climb team for Team Yamaha. Uh, we was able to build their hill climbers and travel the circuit with them. We did very well. We're going to do that again this year. Along with that, we also uh, have the only backcountry guide service in the Alpine Bridger National Forest area now. So that's a huge benefit to this area because for one, I'm the, I'm, I know the area probably better than anybody else in this area. I've been here longer than any other person that's came into this area, uh, explored the mountains, been in the mountains, and found a lot of good stuff throughout that. So uh, we've got, we build custom sleds, we guide, and we also build the hill climbers for Yamaha. When did I actually change from uh, recreational to uh, more of a professional riding uh, or competition riding. I actually, uh, I started riding in 70s, 78, 79. Was first on my own sled in early 80s and moved here in the 90s. I've always raced motorcycles my whole life, so uh, competition has always been in my blood. I in the 90s, we started uh, a shop called TJ Sports, uh, which became the Yamaha dealership here. And we, you know, we just, instead of following the trail or following other people, we wanted to be the ones to explore. We wanted to be the ones to, you know, I wanted to go out and do stuff that nobody's done or nobody has seen on a snowmobile. Uh, I also started racing snowcross in 94, 95 uh, and did some hill climbing once, a few times during them years. But backcountry riding was more what I wanted to do. Uh, our shop's busy in the winter time so competing myself really wasn't uh, something that was, you know, you got to take one with the other. So if I competed I couldn't backcountry ride because you had to use all your energy on competing. So basically, so I just wanted to do the back, what everybody calls, you know, professional backcountry riding or boondocking and all that. We've been doing since 94, 95. Uh, we've been exploring the gulches, we've been exploring the mountains, the drainages, getting lost, spending the night, you know, a few times. The Yamaha mountain sled, the personality of it is, you know, it's, you know you're coming home on it. You know if you drop into something uh, or if you get into a position that maybe you shouldn't be in, that you can get yourself out of it. You know you're not gonna blow something up, usually break something if you get in a bad spot. Uh, they're good at knocking down trees. They're built rugged, you know. They're dependable, durable. Uh, some of the great things about them are, you, and I'm talking turboed ones. Uh, we don't ride anything but the turbo Yamahas because you got to remember the Nitro is basically only a 600 class sled. So people think of it as a is a big sled, and it's really not. It's only a 600 class sled stock. So we run turbos. We up the power a little bit, and uh, usually we can. We have a good time riding with all the other manufacturer sleds. Uh, it's getting tougher and tougher to keep ahead of them nowadays just because they've came so far. But when the four, four strokes first came out, the Apex and the Nitro, it was pretty hard to, it was really hard to even compete with them. Riding style for the Yamaha, I think the best style is, is smooth. Use your finesse and look ahead. It's not a cut and thrust machine. 
Uh, you need to you need to ride a smooth line. It's not something because it does weigh a little more than the other brands. We need you need to uh, look ahead, know your moves, and have an out if something is to happen. Say you catch a stump under the snow uh, that you didn't see. Uh, you need to be prepared for that. The strengths of the Yamaha, as always, is its durability. The reliability, the durability, uh, longevity. You don't have to buy a new one every year or every 2,000 miles. Uh, you know, on my personal, one of my personal sleds, I have over 5,500 miles on it and have never replaced a part in the clutch, never touched the motor. So, it's just one of those things Yamaha has always done and I think in some aspects it's hurt them sometimes but most of the time it's a positive because if you know you're going out it's most likely you're coming back on it. Some of the other strengths of the Yamaha are, are always that the, the power is so broad that you, it's, it's always there. We have uh, on our sleds that we ride I call it four wheel drive. Uh, some of the other sleds are now getting it. Uh, the turbo, I just consider it four-wheel drive. You get in a spot where you just aren't thinking you're going to make it and you just pin it and the thing just spins that track. So all the torque of that motor just spins the track so fast that it, it will most, most of the time, not all the time, but in certain situations you'll dig yourself out. It moves a lot of air. That track can move a lot of air and a lot of snow in a hurry. So I think that's a strength of that motor, of the four-stroke motors, is the torque, uh, especially once they're turboed and you put some boost to them. The weakness of the Yamaha is, number one, is the weight. We have to contend with, uh, you know, 80 pounds heavier than some of the other sleds on, on, out there on the market. So you have to get past that. You have to not let that be a factor when you're riding them. Uh, I used to tell people, when I was a dealer, I would tell people, you put 300 miles on it, if you don't like it, we'll take it back. But if you put a realistic 300 miles of true riding on it, you'll like the sled. Uh, that's because it takes a while to transfer from a two-stroke to a four-stroke. You have to learn how to deal with the characteristics of the motor and of the torque of that motor instead of just having a snap, snap, snap you know, you have a grunt, you have a pull all the way through. We call it two-stroking. Uh, two-strokers, wah, 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 you know, they just like this the whole time they're riding. And if you ride a four-stroke, you need to learn to just use smooth throttle. Just a smooth drive at throttle. It's like driving a diesel truck versus a gas truck. You just sort of walk into the gas and it just goes. If you can maintain a steady throttle, you'll do a lot better than if you try to two-stroke it. The chassis of the Apex was more forward riding. It had a vertical steering instead of a, more of a horizontal. But the Nitro, you just step a foot back and, and the chassis balances out pretty well. You just need to, like I said, look ahead, be smooth, and transition uh, your weight movement as smooth as possible. The balance point and the leverage on this sled, on the Nitros, uh, where number one is we like to shorten the handlebar riser on them, uh, drop it down so you move down your body weight down just a little bit lower, uh, and then and then with your foot back a little bit farther than normal riding, you, you was able to uh, side hill it and hold it with no effort. Where if you didn't have your body in proper position, standing too straight up. Uh, too tall bars, I see a lot. People move the bars too far forward. You ride too far over the front of the sled, then the back can't really get traction, and you're using the front of the sled is actually hurting you because it's weight. You're putting too much weight on the front of the sled. Standing versus sitting on the Nitro, uh, well, we're gonna have a Viper in a year, I hope, so. Uh, we're working with the new Vipers, as you can see what we're sitting here by right now. But the Nitro, you know, my belief is the only time really sitting is when you're on the trail, either headed up or headed down. Uh, standing, riding is comfortable. Uh, if you get the handlebars in a comfortable position, you get, 
get your stance, you get everything situated to what you like to, to a comfortable position, then it doesn't really bother you to stand all day. You can stand up and not be tired versus sitting and standing, sitting and standing wears you out more so than if you just stay standing, I find. Some of the things that give me confidence uh, to ride where a lot of people don't go is the fact that with the turbo nitro, we can go in places and not have to worry about getting out or not being able to make it where we want to go. Uh, you know, everybody claims they have high horse numbers or this. I said, not always is horsepower the key, it's the torque. And so there's been one place that I've only been one time in my life. I'd like to go back, but it takes two Yamahas to get there, not other sleds. Others, we've tried to go with other sleds. They're just, they don't, for some reason, it's hard for them. I'm sure there's riders out there that could do it if they had this sled built, especially for something like that. But we can, you know, with the turbo power, you can turn it up a couple pounds with the four stroke motor. You have such a great RPM range that if you need a little more horsepower, you turn up the boost, get yourself out of that predicament you were in, or, or just leave it down and run, you know, comfortably all day.